Hello everyone, my name is Victor Ku, founder of the 3D Printing Club at Westview High School. As many of you all know, 3D Printing Club has been producing face shields since the beginning of March to people around the community who needs them the most. As of now, we've produced over 1,000 face shields and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. In this video, I want to test how effective our face shields are and just facial coverings in general are when it comes to reducing the transmission of bacteria and viruses from our mouths. Uh, we've been all told from countless uh, social media and just media platforms in general that wearing a face facial covering will reduce these transmissions. However, I want to test to see how exactly how exactly effective um, these coverings are when it comes to reducing these transmissions. So I'll be documenting this experiment so that we can both see the results firsthand. Now before we get into the experiment, I want to first thank my amazing AP Biology teacher for making this experiment all possible. She was the one who was able to find all these supplies and a special thanks to Miramar College and the MGen Foundation for actually being able to supply all of these all of these materials to high schoolers like me in order to make this experiment possible. In this experiment, we'll be studying the effects of facial coverings when it comes to the, the distribution of oral aerosols from our mouths. In other words, we want to test and see how effective are facial coverings uh, when it comes to reducing the spread of bacteria. Now, many of you guys might be wondering, whoa, 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 slow down, Victor. COVID-19 is a virus, right? Not a bacteria. Although you guys have a point, COVID-19 is indeed a virus and is completely different from bacteria. However, the way of it spreading through the air particles, um, both viruses and bacteria spread in a similar fashion. Therefore, we can assume that these two will have a similar effect when it comes to the transmission. Moreover, this experiment is limited in terms of the supplies. Um, because of the fact that the supplies that I was given were specifically made for culturing bacteria instead of viruses. So we're going to have to make the assumption here as well. The supplies for this experiment are two simple things. Uh, I'm going to look through my notes real quick. The first thing will be Luria broth suspended in agar, uh, also known as LV plage, which is a medium for growing bacteria inside a petri dish. So this is one of the LB plates. Here is the agar, this top creamy white part, and then the lid is on the bottom over here. Now, in my Zoom meeting with my AP Biology teacher on how to go, how to conduct this experiment, she mentioned that these LB plates are very similar to Hometown Buffet, the all-you-can-eat restaurant. Um, and that's because of the fact that she said that these LB plates are like the perfect place for bacteria to grow in. They have all the food that you can eat. They have all the space that you need for bacteria to grow and multiply. It literally has everything, the perfect place, paradise place for bacteria to grow and live in. The second thing we'll need for our experiment here is a makeshift temperature um, container or some place where we can we can regulate a uh, temperature to store these LB plates um, in. We want to keep these LB plates at around 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Guess where the temperature comes from? Um, and no, uh, it's because of the fact that we want to store these LB plates with our bacteria from our mouths um, at a, sort of something similar to the human body temperature because we want to create a similar environment for these bacteria to grow in that's similar to the human body. Now, I plan on executing this experiment by holding the LB plate right in front of my mouth a couple inches away and I just talk for 30 seconds straight about something um, and I, that's to get the oral aerosols from my mouth onto the LB plate. And then from there, I will cap it off and I'll store it inside the, the makeshift temperature container and I'll let it bake there, not literally bake, but I'll let it sit there and let just let it grow. Our control experiment will be wearing no facial coverings, so literally just straight up talking uh, without any facial coverings at all. Um, treatment one will be wearing a face, just a regular uh, face mask. Treatment two will be uh, wearing just a face shield, one of my 3D printed face shields. Treatment three will be the combination of both of these uh, face shields and face mask. And then lastly for treatment four, I plan on using a K95 mask. 
during this five day experiment, I will be checking up on these LD plates every 24 hours or so. And I'll also update you guys as well in terms of how much the, how much bacteria has grown on each certain type of LB plate. Now keep in mind that the least amount of bacteria grown on an LB plate will yield the best facial covering or best combination of facial coverings um, to wear in public in order to minimize the being affected by COVID-19. All right, so now I got all the precursor and just the explanation of how the experiment is going to be conducted. Um, let's get straight into the experiment now. All right, so we got the controlled petri dish over here um, and I'm just gonna straight up open it and then I'll just talk for around 30 seconds. So let's begin. Hello, um, I'm not sure what to talk about, but I'm just gonna sit here for around 30 seconds and just talk about um, just random things. The agar smells very, really weird. It's like a, it's like a plasticky, um, weird, I don't know, I guess that's a seafood as well in here as well. I'm not too sure why, uh, but it's not really seafood, it just has a weird, unique odor smell. I'm, I'm not too sure about it, um, but yeah, it's very interesting and has a very unique sense of smell. <laughs> All right, and then that was around 50 or 30 seconds. Um, I'm gonna cap it off right here. And then I'm gonna set it off to the side as our control experiment. For treatment one, I'll be using one of these regular old face masks. Just pop it on like this, stretch it out like this, and then use the wires. If you guys didn't know, there's a wire up here to bend it around your nose to really just seal it up in there. All right, let's see how this one will do. We got treatment number one over here, which is just the face mask. And let the 30 seconds begin. I'm gonna keep on talking about the, the, the agar over here. The agar is a, oh wait, I can, no, I can still smell the agar. It's, it smells very, yeah, I don't know why. I'm just saying seafood for some reason. Like the seafood, okay, maybe it's not seafood, but it has a really distinct smell. Not, I don't know how to describe it, but like, it's just, it's just, I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay, I think that was 30 seconds right there. So I'm gonna cap it off again. All right, so this will be treatment number one. All right, next we'll be moving on to treatment number two, which is one of these 3D printed face shields that my club has been manufacturing since COVID really just began. So we got our treatment number two LB plate over here, and let's just keep talking. Seconds begins now. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, uh, we've been manufacturing these 3D printed face shields for like a really long time, and um, uh, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. I enjoy uh, going out and meeting people, new people and just really hearing other people's side of the story and how much they really need these face shields. And it really means a lot to me knowing that I'm helping out the community and just trying to benefit everyone. Okay, I think that was 30 seconds, so I'm gonna cap it off, and then I'll set it to side. All right, treatment number three will be one of these face masks and a face shield. So we'll be doing the combination of these, and we'll just keep on continuing with our treatment number three over here. Timer starts now. Uh, so basically, going back to what I said from the previous uh, previous Petri dish, um, yeah, it really just makes me feel so happy knowing that I'm giving these face shields to people who are in need and like are at high risk of actually contracting the virus. And like, you know, it just makes me feel really, really nice knowing that people are sort of like feeling a lot safer going outside. They are more willing to actually like step outside versus um, uh, self quarantine inside. And it can be really frustrating. I know I have been very, very, it's been very different since quarantine has began. All right, I think that's 30 seconds. All right, that's treatment number three. And then we'll move on to treatment number four. Here is our K95 mask. Uh, we'll be tossing this over. Oh, my hair is a mess now. <laughs> We're gonna tighten it on the back over here. Now we got our K95 mask over here. I hope the audio quality isn't that bad. You can still he hear me. And also excuse my hair because it's all over the place, but it's okay. Um, and now we got treatment number four over here. So let's start talking for another 30 seconds. So yeah, going back from what I said from treatment number three, it's definitely been a lot harder for me personally because of the fact, because mainly because of the lack of social interaction. You know, I in school, I've always had the have enjoyment of talking with other people, but now it's really just me and my family. Uh, we've only been talking just that much, and then uh, every day just seems so repetitive nowadays, and it's been it's been tough, but I'm happy to have 3D printing giving me a source of motivation to keep us driving and trying to improve the community in whatever way possible. Okay, so that was 30 seconds. I'm going to cap it off over here. All right, and then let's store these in our makeshift uh, temperature container. All right, so I pulled my phone off my, my stand over here, and now I'll be showing you guys what the heating temperature container, uh, I need to come up with a better name, but I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here is what the apparatus looks like. Um, this is the heating heat bed over here, which will heat this little container storing the, the um, agar plates um, inside here. And we're hoping that this little container here will will consist of a sort of a temperature that's similar to the human body. 
So we're gonna turn this on, and I was very thankful that my thankful that my dad was able to get this apparatus over here. So we're gonna set the temperature at around 37 degrees temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to around 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the heat. This is to let the let the device know that we wanted to heat, and we're gonna switch it up to 37 degrees. There we go. We have this little temperature measuring. Just take a look over here and see that uh, it, it, that it is indeed almost 98.7 degrees. So it still has a bit of warming up to do. Um, however, I did notice that on the sides, it does get a little bit um, less than the actual temperature that we want, but I hope this is okay for this experiment. So I'll be putting all these agar plates inside um, over here and I noticed that I'm gonna put the put every every plate over here the agar side up facing upwards um, So I'm gonna put it in here and then I'm gonna There we go, and then I'm gonna cap it off like this And then yeah, there we go we will be waiting, we will be checking up on this every 24 hours. It is currently 1 o'clock um, on July 28th, so we'll be checking up on this every 24 hours and see how much bacteria has grown on each treatment. So I guess I'll see you guys in 24 hours. All right, so it's day two of the experiment. As you can tell, it looks a little bit different from yesterday. Um, so I decided to add a some bubble wrap because of the fact that inside, um, I noticed that the that the bottom part of the container here is a lot a little bit hotter, um, and compared to the top part. In fact, there's like a ten degree difference. So I decided to use some bubble wrap to try to insulate the heat so that even the top part is a bit warm. I also added a little thermometer here. Um, to the side so that I can have a constant temperature reading and it's a little less than 30 39 degrees Celsius, but eh, it's okay All right, so let's open this up and just take a look at our results So here is our petri dishes from after one day uh, since the start of the experiment it Everything looks relatively the same as the first day. I don't see any bacteria growth on any any LB plates. After analyzing it, I'm gonna put it back into the container and then we're gonna wait for another 24 hours. All right, so it's day two of the experiment and today's the day that we finally get to see some results. So uh, let me take the experiment out and let's see what we got. All right, so let's begin with one Petri dish at a time. So we'll start with the control experiment. So here we have the control, as you can see. These are just sm some small milky white bacteria colonies that are actually beginning to grow. Treatment one, we have here. I don't exactly see that many, that anything on treatment one at all, actually. Two over here. Remember, treatment two was just a 3D printed face shield. And we can see some uh, droplets over here. Um, I'm presuming these are the bacteria colony as well. Treatment number three, remember this is the combination of the face shield and the face mask. Um, I don't see anything at all actually. And then treatment number four, which is the K95 mask. There's a couple of small particles down here. I'm not too sure if that's bacteria or not. I want to go back to the control experiment because we can actually see there's some bacteria colonies growing and this is very exciting. So yeah, going back down here, there's a couple up here and off to the side over here as well. So yeah, this is pretty exciting. The experiment's finally happening and we're finally seeing some results. So we're going to check back again in 24 hours to see any new updates. All right, welcome back to day three of our little microbiology experiment. Um, so I just took the Petri dishes out of the heating container and this is our control, one, two, one, two, three, four. And let's examine the results that we have here. So starting off, we have the control experiment. And as you can tell, we have a giant bacteria colony forming right here. Here's a couple more dots up here and one more dot down in the middle. But this is really exciting. We're, I'm super excited to see that we are showing results that the bacteria is actually forming on a Petri dish. Moving on to treatment number one, 
I don't exactly see anything on treatment number one. In fact, it looks pretty much the exact same as day one, or not even day one, just like the original Petri dish. I don't see any bacteria at all. So this hints that A, wearing a face mask is a very good idea to minimize oral aerosols from transferring. Treatment number two, we sort of see some little condensation similar to the previous day, but I just see some white dots. Um, that's not really similar to Treatment number three sees similar things on this on this petri dish as well compared to treatment number two. I just see some white white water droplets. It looks it appears to be water droplets, um, and I just see it scattered all over the top side. All right, treatment number four. It's pretty much the exact same. The N95 mask is doing its job. I don't see any bacteria colony. I just see one of those white droplets up here. All right, welcome back to day four of the experiment. Um, here is an overall look of all the uh, Petri dishes together. And as you can tell, we can actually start noticing uh, some bacteria colonies growing on the first, on the control experiment. So why don't we take a look and start it off with that. So obviously there's one giant bacteria colony over here. And then um, there are some other bacteria colonies that, that are here, but it's a little hard to see. For example, here's one over here, one over here, and then one over here, and then one over here. Treatment number one, which is just a face mask, and I don't see any bacteria colonies forming at all. This is quite interesting. Treatment two over here, I don't see anything either. It looks the exact same as treatment one, and I don't see any bacteria colonies forming at all. All right, treatment three is where the interesting part comes in. So if we take a look at it, notice here, there's, it's really weird. I've noticed, I, I see a bacteria colony forming over here. And keep in mind that treatment number three is both the face mask and the 3D printed face shield. And surprisingly, we see some bacteria getting through on this Petri dish. So that's a, that's a pretty big surprise on my part, especially when there is no bacteria colonies forming on treatment one or treatment two. So this definitely comes as a surprise. But or this is a pretty interesting observation. Other than that, that's pretty much all the bacteria colonies I notice here. And then treatment number four is our N95, and I don't see anything at all either with this one. All right, cool. So here is an overall look again of all the Petri dishes. All right, so now we're gonna put these back into the container and we'll see how they form tomorrow. All right, so welcome back, it's day five. And today we have some very surprising results as you can tell from the Petri dishes right now. But let's take a look at them one by one and see them individually. For the control experiment, it looks pretty much the exact same as yesterday. We have a couple of dots that are forming, uh, these bacteria colonies that are forming over here. Um, and they're rel they grew just a tad bit, but not too much. Not too much compare to treatment number one over here. There is a massive, massive bacteria colony growing over here. This is such a surprise because I yesterday we saw nothing on treatment one, but today there is a giant bacteria colony forming over here. That's a lot bigger than the control experiment. Here's a comparison by side by side. It's 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 massive. Like whoa. Okay, I did not expect that at all, especially because we've all been told to wear face masks to help prevent this kind of spread. So this is quite very interesting. Treatment two is our 3D printed face shield. And as you can tell, there's quite nothing actually. The same as, the, as day one of our experiment. I don't see any bacteria colony at all forming anywhere. And treatment three, which is the combination of both face mask and 3D printed face shield. There's just one small bacteria colony over here to the side. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. And then lastly, the K95 mask is doing fantastic. I don't see any bacteria colonies forming at all on this Petri dish. So if we take a look at all the uh, Petri dishes again, here's an overall look again. And just wow, in just comparison with treatment one to, uh, compared to everything else, this is massive. All right, and today is the supposedly the final day of our little microbiology experiment. 
but I decided that I might want to, I'm gonna extend the experiment just a tad bit longer because we are starting to see some massive results and results that are actually quite different from what we've all anticipated. So I want to keep the experiment going a little bit longer and see maybe until the bacteria colony start getting out of control on each Petri dish because this is quite interesting seeing all these results happening so quickly as well now and I just can't wait to see more about how these Petri dishes will change in the next couple of days. All right, welcome back to our experiment here. We are on day seven and as you can tell, there's a lot of changes over the past two days uh, since we last looked at this uh, but for now let's take a look at them one by one so as you can tell the control experiment is the same old same old um, there's some there's a bacteria colony growing here and there are actually some scattering scattering bacteria colonies as well here's one over here another one here another one here however here is the big one as you can tell the biggest one or biggest results we've seen since the previous days which is this giant giant bacteria colony forming over here um, if we take a ruler actually we can measure it to be at around 2.5 uh, centimeters so this is a definitely huge surprise the treatment too is just a 3d printed face shield and wow look at this I don't see anything at all still with this this petri dish over here treatment number three we see a little small bacteria colony forming right here um, but other than that that's pretty much it and then treatment number four which is our K95, I don't see anything at all either. All right, so if we bring back all these Petri dishes just for a comparison, look at this, this is massive compared to everything else. And like, I thought this, the treatment one, which is just the face mask would be the least preventative, or at least like one of the better ones, not the worst one, as you can tell here. But this is, everything comes as a surprise in life. Let's check on this in another two days. All right, welcome back. Today is day nine, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the final day of our experiment over here. And we have some massive results going on right now, as you can tell. Um, but let's start in order. Let's start with the control experiment. Um, the control experiment looks relatively the same as the previous days. As you can tell, there's just one massive colony over here, and then just some other scattered around but they haven't really grown since the past two days uh, which is a little bit surprising especially when we have treatment one over here which is what what is this this is massive i did not expect this at all when it comes to just the just uh wearing a face mask we thought that wearing a face mask would be the best if we grab a ruler over here we can take a look and we see that it's five centimeters in length and around four centimeters uh, on the other direction and just wow it, it, it multiplied quickly and that's that's definitely a surprise treatment two over here there isn't anything at all like i said before treatment two is pretty much the exact same as uh day one of our experiment we don't see anything same with treatment number four over here nothing at all and then treatment number three we just have one bacteria colony forming over here so if we take a look at all of these compared to each other again, one, our control, one, two, three, four. No face, no facial covering, face mask, face shield combination, and K95. So judging from this experiment that we did at our home, um, obviously the K95 and the 3D printed face shield would be the most optimal uh, facial covering to wear during or in the public to reduce oral aerosols from transmitting from one to another. Now, there are a lot of factors that can contribute to these results over here, which is not what we're expecting. Um, one of which could be how the temperature regulation of the uh, heating container is not even throughout. Another thing is it could, there could be a small little hole inside the this petri dish for example like it might have been slid out or something like that which collected more bacteria than the original day but other than that that's pretty much it by documenting this entire experiment i'm hoping to shed light on 
the science behind the medical professionals and the CDC in terms of how they come up with these guidelines to help minimize the transmission of oral aerosols from each individual. Hopefully this will give humanity a chance and opportunity to minimize the spreading of this virus and hopefully we'll be able to get out of this pandemic sooner rather than later. So please, if you could share this video to other people and inform them on how important it is to wear a facial covering in public, please, please do so, so that we don't have to lose another life again. Once again, my name is Victor, and I hope this experiment has been helpful.